What's good, YouTube? It's 35 degrees outside, and today we're going to warm things up and show you how to get broken exhaust bolts out of any LS cylinder head. All right, uh, today's topic is gonna be not classroom work, but pretty much try to turn the wrench, so to speak. We're actually gonna dig out our, um, our LQ9, and it suffers from exhaust manifold bolts, broken bolts, just like every LS platform does. If you have never seen this before, you probably haven't been on, around LSs that long, and I have never seen an engine without at least one broken manifold bolt. We're going to dig this engine out. We're gonna probably we're gonna get the cherry picker out. We're gonna get the engine stand out, and we're gonna um, we're gonna use our cheap Harbor Freight welder. This is just a 110 volt welder. You don't need nothing special, fancy, or high wattage. Sure, those things can help, but you could totally do it one of these. So, I'm gonna set the camera back. We're gonna dig some things out. We're going to suspend this engine in the air a little bit and we're going to take this torque converter out. Alright, we got the engine up on the stand right now. And one thing I'm gonna get, show you guys that on the exhaust manifold, before you break these loose, I would suggest you guys not use an impact on the bolts when you first break them loose. Use a regular ratchet because you don't want to create yourself more welding work than what you already have. Uh, right now on this side, I think we only have, um, it looks like one or two at the beginning and the end on the driver's side. And on the passenger side, we might have a couple. The manifold comes directly off on the driver's side and on the passenger side. You just got to remove the dipstick. But I do suggest you guys unhook your O2 sensors if you still have the extension attached. That way you can throw this manifold just directly on the ground and drape your wire back over the engine. What I like to do is, uh, before I get started, I'll go to the hardware store and I'll get a bag of these nuts. Um, notice it's actually standard. I do try to typically grab a bigger size versus what the actual screw is. So that way, uh, you this kind of goes around it basically. If you do grab a bag of these, this is about three bucks for 63 of them. Make sure you grab zinc plated versus galvanized steel. If you weld on galvanized steel, it can actually emit fumes and make you sick. So. That's a helpful hint. Also on the flush mount bolt that we have on our left side, we'll actually weld, weld a little ball first, then we're gonna put the washer down, and then over the little ball, we'll then put our nut over it and then weld all that together. That'll give this a chance to spin individually and actually get the stud out. The one on the left is gonna be the hardest one, and it's gonna, it's gonna take probably 
seven, eight tries, maybe even 10 tries to get that out. Usually the one with the exposed stud is the easier, but don't give up. You're gonna get it out and we're just gonna keep trying. I like to cover the exhaust ports up uh, with a little flat piece of old steel that I have laying around. I'm using a flux core welder and it typically put a splatter everywhere. These are exhaust ports directly into the engine. So you don't want anything falling down in there. It's usually the, the one you're welding to and the one next to it. So I'm just gonna lay this down on top of it and hopefully that'll protect the engine a little bit. We got our little ball on there. It's still hot, so I don't wanna do too much. Put the washer over everything. I'm gonna take this nut. I'm gonna set that over this ball. And then we're gonna weld all that into one. Now the first couple tacks I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hold on to this with the needle nose pliers. I actually pushed it a little bit. just for a split second. I like to try to wait until it turns not glowing to get it off. And kind of let the bolt tell you what it wants. Definitely don't go gung-ho. I'm not sure if we got this one this time either. As you can see, if you use a something heavy on here, you won't be able to adjust with the misalignment that I that you have. And I think we're getting it. We definitely got it. There you go. Fully out. All right, let's move on to stud number two. Now, through the magic of editing, that looked like we did that in one try. Actually, it took seven tries to get that out. So make sure you don't give up. We still got more to do. This one's gonna probably be one try, maybe two, but the flush mount are definitely not the easiest ones to do, and that's why we did it first. I don't want you guys thinking that it's gonna work on the first try again, because it's not. It's, it's gonna take a few tries. And this snapped off every single time, and I, I just get another washer, try it again, put a ball on it, and go for it, and, and you just keep trying, basically. So we're gonna move all this junk out of the way, and then we're gonna try for that exposed one. And just to show you guys, you know, this is, you know, this is real, but touching this, this has never been welded on or anything crazy. So, it's cold to the touch. It might take a couple of heat cycles to get that to loose, but hopefully, since we got clean metal, maybe it'll attach good enough to get us out. Typically the stub ones usually do. This is feeling a little jammy, so I'm gonna go back a little bit. switch wrenches. The heat makes this expand just a touch and it kind of kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to go to a slightly bigger size and metric just to kind of 
get the wrench on and off a little bit easier. All right, that's two. So we're gonna back the camera up, and then we're gonna we're gonna flip this over, and we're gonna do the driver side. All right, guys, same deal as before. We're gonna put a nut on there. Just got the camera moved. Never touched, never worked on. This is cool to the touch. I'm gonna get the welder turned on. We're gonna put a clamp close to this, and we're gonna try a look with this. So we're also gonna still protect our ports just like we did last time. Not quite, not quite, no penetration. While well, I'm still warm, I'm gonna add a little more to it. That first try, the weld didn't attach to the nut. Still no go. So I'm going to add a little more weld to it and get the weld ball to attach that a little bit better. I probably should clean it off a little bit, but I won't. I'm going to let that kind of cool a little bit. I really need a little weld on this side to help make that attach, but we're going to go for it. I'm going to make sure I can still get the wrench in there. I'm trying not to block the camera. And I could I could just fill this one until it's coming out. I can only get the wrench in on one side from all the weld we put on, but that's all right. We'll just keep it moving. And as you can see, you don't have to be perfect. You just got a good good get good penetration on it, basically. And I'm gonna try my best not to edit any of that out, so you guys can kind of see that. You know, she's still cooking, so, so we're gonna get her out, and then we're just gonna, gonna try to throw it right there for you. There you go. All right, guys, we got some more bonus bonus content. So now we're moving on to the last flush mount stud. This is at the front of the engine on the driver's side, actually. So we're gonna clean all this off again, just like before. We're gonna to try to get in there and get as much of this metal clean on the, the actual stud itself. We're gonna weld a ball, we'll put the washer on. We're gonna put the nut on top of the ball. We're gonna weld it all together and we're gonna hope for the best. So, wish me luck.
I hope I got the count right, but I think that was, that was definitely 13, 14 tries, maybe even 15. There you have it. And it's fully out. So we got a lot of cleanup to do. We're gonna take the air hose and blow all this slag out. We're gonna cover these exhaust ports. That's what it takes. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight welder, 110 volts. The setting we were using was max, and the dial was the wire speed was set at looks like eight. So that's all there is to it to get broken exhaust that's out your LS engine. All my beginners out there, I highly recommend you get some good PPE. Uh, you don't need the best of the best to, to get this job done. I would, however, recommend um, an auto dimming helmet. This will probably be the most expensive thing you buy. These are still only 100 bucks. And of course, they got better ones out there for 500 bucks. But to, for a beginner, you don't really need it. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and give me some comments on what you would like to see in the next video. See you guys next time.